Hello, 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 guys. It's me, Christy. I am back with a painting. I haven't been on here in so long, and I've missed you guys, so I thought I would jump on and do uh, a live painting with you. So I've been working a lot on my sketching so that I could get better, because this time last year I wasn't even drawing. And so I've been diligently working on that. So here's what I've got today. So this is actually uh, a sketch that I did from a photograph that I took when I was in Arizona. And it was the stupa and it was so beautiful. I love it so much. So I want to paint this so I can have this uh, all the time. Uh, maybe I'll sell it, I'm not sure. So anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, start painting with you guys. I'm so excited to be here. I've missed you so much. Oh, I see it just now told you guys I was live. Well, welcome, Christy here with Goddess Gallery and Abundant with Healing and Wellness. Hello, welcome. I'm not sure who's joined me, but let me know who's here so that I can greet you. It's been quite a while since I've done a live. I was just saying that uh, what I did was I've taken some time off to practice my sketching because this time last year I wasn't sketching. I was just painting. Uh, and so I took a photograph of the stupa when I was in Arizona and I love it. Oh, thank you for the hearts. So I uh, sketched it out and what I've noticed the interesting thing is, is once you sketch, it's much harder to paint the detail work. Uh, so now that I've got my sketching down, I want to balance the sketching with the art, I mean with the painting. Like it's very hard to get to these tiny little curls uh, with a paintbrush because I find that either I don't have the right technique yet or don't know the right way yet, but the, the brushes are not stiff enough. So I've got some toothpicks here is what I got for my curls, if I can even pick them up. I've got my little brace on my finger here I'll pick off there. Okay, so I've got toothpicks for the curls and the colors that I used I've got some, I've got some uh, burnt umber, some uh, vivid hue, uh, some ripe sienna, orange, yellow, white, Payne's gray, and a little bit of black in here. Uh, and so we're gonna go ahead and just see what we can do. I hope you guys are painting still. I hope you guys are keeping yourself uh, active and, and uh, getting those creative juices going. So let's go ahead and I hope you can see all of this still very well. Let's go ahead and see what we've got. I'm gonna go ahead and start here by my sunrise. So when I was there uh, in Sedona, in Arizona, uh, I was at the stupa at like eight o'clock in the morning. And so it was extremely beautiful. And the sunrise was breathtaking, but it was behind the mountains. So I'm gonna put it behind the mountains. I'm still uh, working diligently on highlighting and depth and things like that. However, you know, the only way we're gonna get better is by practicing. And I was practicing with you guys every day, but it's been quite some time. So I feel like some of my skills have gotten a little stagnant. So we're gonna work on that. I watched a video and posted it yesterday. I hope you guys saw it, uh, of a young lady who wanted to brush up on her art skills. I see I have more people on here. Welcome, much love and light to you. Christy with Abundant, or I mean, excuse me, Goddess Gallery and Abundant Healing and Wellness. Let me know who's here so that I can, uh, so that I can greet you. So anyway, the young lady had uh, taken herself into the woods for an entire week and committed to painting something different every day. And she had no idea what the pictures were going to be. I think her friends had made uh, a, like five cards that said what to paint. So she pulled one out and that was how they, she decided. And by the end of the week, her art had gotten better. And I remember from doing this every day with you guys at two o'clock, that my art greatly improved. I'm even doing nudes now. So, and I actually would like to do those on lives with you guys. Uh, body form is pretty amazing. So I've got my sunrise going here. And now what I wanna do is I'm gonna work on this little background up here 
which is uh, actually it was a mountain range that uh, was there as well. So I'm going to go ahead and work on this little piece right here. I'm excited for this one to be done. I uh, hope that I can do it justice for the uh, sketch work that I have already done. So I'm going to mix uh, a little bit of uh, white with some um, Payne's Gray. Payne's Gray is what I want to do here for my mountains. And it's gray, but it's a little brown there too, so I don't want it too dark of a gray. So I've got just, I've added some white in there, and I'm just going to basically just do the outline first, okay? And then I'm going to come through and work on some detail work. And it doesn't have to be perfect. It can be one-dimensional, it can be two-dimensional, it can be whatever you want it to be. Uh, this is just being here with you guys, sharing art with you, encouraging you to be you, and it doesn't matter if it's perfect or not. So it's just sharing time together, teaching art. And really, you know what teaching art is. Truthfully, it's teaching people how to open up to your heart chakra. That's where all your creativity comes from, is your, uh, your lower chakras and your, you know, the passion comes from your heart. So once you open up your heart chakra, your sacral chakra, and your solar plexus chakra, then your art will flow freely. I remember when I first started doing this with you guys, uh, I was terrified. I was absolutely terrified to go live for one. And then uh, I was terrified because my art wasn't, you know, it wasn't what I wanted it to be. I was still growing and learning. And I think that uh, we all often have expectations of being experts right out of the gate. And that's because people judge us. And Art isn't about being judged. Art is about freedom. So that's what I'm here to show you guys. Be you. As Dr. Seuss says, there's no one newer than you, right? Okay, so I've got this first mountain pretty filled in here. And there is no uh, rhyme nor reason towards the coloring. It's just how I dipped it into uh, the paper. And sometimes, oftentimes, I just allow the art to be what it wants to be. Because if you listen to it, it will tell you. So I've got my mountain in the background going there. And now I'm going to come over here and work on the gray in this part of the mountain. Behind the stupa. So I hope you guys are doing well. I've missed you all very much. Very quiet today. That's okay. As usual, I'll talk it up for both of us. So I'm coming over here and I'm just uh, following my outline again and I'll do the detail work uh, later. And I want to be real careful here because I have my Tibetan flags here and so I don't want to uh, paint those. Add a little more white, I think, to my gray here. There we go. Let's get a little bit dark. Come in here real close. Cut in by my stupa. There we go. A little more water to my brush. Okay, so as soon as I get this little section done, I will uh, show you where it's at. It's a little dark on this side. That's all right. So 
want to blend it though with this other color so I don't have more than one or excuse me so I have a blending of those contrasting grays not uh, <clears throat> not going from completely light to dark so there's where we are with that I think this is gonna be beautiful okay so I'm gonna come up here now and do this part and then as you can see there is a tree in front of it so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, turn it this way so I could get at this a little bit better add some more white to uh, my paint gray a little more water and I'm using watercolors and acrylics uh, just so you can actually know today they're all watercolors today just in case you're curious um, I find watercolors are pretty forgiving and to me uh, you could go to a craft store and buy yourself a children's watercolor kit and that would be a great way to start and the reason why I say that specifically just like that is because I often hear people say oh I can't do art because I don't have the supplies I don't know if you guys remember from my videos last year, but what I did was to prove that that was incorrect was I made a bunch of paint with plant matter and soil to show you that you can have art anywhere. And I even painted on a piece of bark. Uh, so the watercolors is actually how I started mm -hmm. a children's watercolor kit with my fingers on raw wood. And I miss doing that because there's this beautiful connection uh, between your hands and oops I got paint or something on me but uh, between your hands and the canvas so it's very uh, it's very therapeutic okay so I'm just coming down here I'm doing the background of this uh, mountain the tree is in front of it and I want to be really mindful and cautious for me not to paint that. I'm very excited about this painting. I, I, I'm just praying that it'll be as good as I hope. You know, we always have such huge expectations though. I'm sure it will be beautiful. So I'd love to hear what you guys have been up to. I don't know about you, but through this ascension, I have been going through a lot of growth and transition. Uh, seeing a lot of things very differently than I used to. I'm sure that you guys are too. I hope that you're being mindful and protecting your energy and not uh, giving it to those who are draining of you. Sometimes givers give too much and we forget to give back to ourselves. So remind yourself to take care of yourself. Hi, Christy with Goddess Gallery here and I'm working on my painting here with uh it's a photo from a photograph that i took when i was in arizona uh it's the stupa there was a buddha statue and then the stupa and it was overlooking this beautiful mountain and it was about eight o'clock in the morning so i am uh, sketched it and uh working to incorporate my sketching skills with my painting skills so i'm doing the background of this mountain now because there's a tree in front here Oh, please let me know who's here so I can say hello to you. I'd love to chat with you. But back to our energies. Yeah, this whole ascension thing has been um, a very learning experience for a lot of people. And we've been able to see uh, more clearly with a lot of relationships in our lives. Right? Some good, some indifferent some not so good however I hope you've stayed true to yourself and strong and remembering too as long as you do your shadow work you uh, will be good other people project onto us sometimes just remember they don't mean to they don't even realize that they're doing it so we need to remember to be forgiving but yet not be a doormat right all right 
So art definitely will help you with uh, calming your spirit and easing your soul. It brings out your, uh, your magic too. this area I could be using a little bit bigger brush but that's all right that's all right I need to get in between these branches anyway I'd like to see a little bit further along so I've got my as you can see my tree right here and I'm going to come down through here and do these other two sections with some more of that uh that oh what did I tell you was Payne's gray and white so I'm going to add a little bit more of the white to my Payne's gray just kind of keep uh lightening it as I go Payne's gray is pretty dark almost black all right so I'm going to come down here, get this bottom part, again, being careful not to get my Tibetan flags painted. It was such a beautiful location. There were people walking around and hiking all over, people meditating everywhere. It was absolutely gorgeous. Good, good, good experience. All right, so I think this will be good. We'll call this the bottom on that one. I think everybody should go on adventures. If you don't put yourself outside of your comfort zone, you never grow. Like a lot of people said, why do you want to travel to me? And I said, well, I've always wanted to travel. However, if we don't put ourselves in new experiences, we stay stagnant and we're not meant to be stagnant. We're meant to grow and evolve. So travel brings a lot of joy to your heart and soul and it helps you grow as a human being. It exposes you to different things so that therefore you uh, can gain a different perspective. And that's how we grow. And it's important to evolve. You can't stay 12 forever. At least you shouldn't want to anyway. All right. So I'm almost done with my background mountain here. real close to my vase on my stupa which I want to be careful okay so there's that I'll let you see what that's looking like so I think this is going to be pretty amazing I like that a lot all right so now what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here and I'm going to uh Actually, I should probably do this bottom mountain piece. And we're going to use some um, burnt sienna with that one. I think uh, a little bit of burnt sienna and maybe a touch of this Payne's Gray. Just to darken it up. I also put a little bit of red in here. Brilliant red. Uh, so that I could have a real earthy uh, brown just mixing that up now. I'm going to add a little more Payne's Gray. So you can see it's, it's just uh, a little muted. Brightened and muted at the same time. There we go. And I am going to use a little bit bigger brush with this one. Get some of that excess off. my brush off here and let's go ahead and use uh, I'm going to use this guy this is my number 10 okay 
So we're just going to come in here and I'm just going to get some paint on here. Uh oh, I just lost my toothpick. Come right in through here. I'm just kind of feathering up here at the top by the mountain. I don't want a straight line. You know, mountains are not uh, straight like that. And actually, I think what I'm going to do with that is I'm going to dip it uh, in the white as well so that I can give a uh, two-tone here. A little bit of, yeah, there we go. That uh, mixture that I had made was good, but it was pretty uh, one-dimensional. So I wanted to give it some dimension. There we go. Maybe I'll do a little stippling on it. That'll give me a head start on some uh, texture. The, you know, when you go to put your detail work in. And it softens it a bit. Over here. All right, so I'll let you guys see where this is at. I've got a good combination of colors going in here. I like this. Okay. So there's where we're at with our second mountain. It almost looks like I bought a paint by numbers. I did a pretty darn good job of sketching that. This time last year, I was like, oh, I can't draw. I just paint. And now look at me. Now I'm drawing and praying that I can paint as good as I can draw. That's what happens when you practice. You get better and better. Only when we doubt ourselves. Just filling this little mountain side in here. Again, working diligently to not paint my Tibetan flags after all the detail work that I've done. That would make me bummed. Okay, I'm going to add a little more paint on here. There we go. And fill that in a little more water. Just spreading it out. There we go. A little more color. Blending it a little bit softer so that it's going to match this other one a little bit better. There we go. Okay. Show you where I'm at there. There's that. Okay, and now I'm going to come over here and do this side right here. I hope you guys are doing well. All right. So I'm going to come straight over here and do the stippling again. Watch out for my flags again. Could have done a little bit finer job there. There we go. Now the interesting thing is, is when I get to the stupa part itself, it's actually a terracotta. So 
the interesting thing is, is that I've got like um, probably about five or six different shades of uh, brown or um, reds that I need to uh, blend together here. It's kind of interesting. That way you don't have a, a totally brown muted uh, painting, right? There we go. And I can come in by my tree. Add a little more water. little further along there stopped by my flags gonna go ahead and do uh, the top here beautiful and a tiny, tiny little strip over here. There we go. And another tiny one right here. A little bit more. There we go. Yeah, it feels very weird when you're painting your own drawing. Like this. It was like a paint by numbers. <laughs> it feels like I cheated, but I spent the day yesterday sketching this, a part of the day. All right, so there's where we are with that. And so now I think we could come down here just a little bit further. So now these mountains are uh, multiple colors, and there is greenery on all of them, uh, whether it be cactus or bushes or something. So, uh-oh light spot there okay so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come over here and I'm going to work on I think I'll go ahead and do this landmass down here this one right here actually could be a pewter's gray because it was uh, it was a, it was on a cement slab and then gravel um, but I think I'm gonna make this almost like a burnt sienna and raw umber. I think that's what I'm going to do here. Take a little bit of this uh, burnt sienna and mix it with this raw umber here and giving it a little bit uh, a little bit of a darker shade. There we go. So we can have different shades in our mountains. All right. So there you go. As you can see what that color is. It's just slightly uh, darker than the uh, burnt sienna. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and work on this part. Maybe add just a touch more water in here. There we go. Careful not to get into Buddha's hair. And again, I'll come back through here and do some uh, detail work later. And I thought I was going to be able to get all this done uh, during an hour, but I don't think I'm going to be able to. I think it's already been, it's already been a half an hour. I'm going to get a smaller brush here and come over here by my Buddha hair. There we go.
little more on the other side just so I don't get my big brush into his hair. There we go. Okay, set that down a little bit more. <coughs> How that's coming along. As you can see, we've got our varying colors there of brown. <laughs> How exciting is brown? It's actually extremely exciting. I didn't realize there could be so many shades of brown until I was in Arizona and New Mexico. All right. Better add a little bit more color. Let's get a little uh, muddy. Let's get it a little watery too. There we go. I'm gonna have to get my little brush back out. Getting these details close uh, to the Buddha and to the plants. And my big fat brush. I don't think I will be that graceful. And that's pretty muddy. There we go. Real close here on the edges of the stupa. my cactus and come right here okay so you can see where I am so I've come through here and I just sloppily filled in uh, that brown right and I'm gonna come over here with my little brush now get it wet and uh, go around these lines so that I stay out of uh, the face, the parts of the face that I don't want to be in with that big fat brush. Perfect. Just filling that in. Yeah, I hope you guys have been practicing your art too, because if you've been practicing for a year as well, then you probably have some pretty amazing art going on. I know I've seen a lot of the ladies uh, in the past two years pick up painting. So that's pretty cool. Pretty cool. When we think of art, oftentimes we just think of kid do, kids doing art and we forget that we as adults need some creative outlet as well whether that be uh, painting or drawing or writing something creative it's very good for your soul all right almost done filling in by my cactus
that was something else that I found amazing uh, when I was in um, Arizona was I had no idea how many different types of cactus there actually are. I learned a great deal about the plants uh, in Arizona. That was very fun. Okay, a little more water. And now I'm down on this section here. I was fascinated when I went to Casa Grande and saw how uh, they did their irrigation system and their community living spaces. It was extremely amazing. All right, so there is the rough uh, fill-in of the second brown, okay, the background. So there's where I'm at with that one. It's looking pretty cool. I'm pretty excited about it. I'm not sure who's shy on there, but thank you for staying with me. Blessings to you. Okay, so now what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to come down here a little further. I'm going to make this green, but I have a couple of different bushes in here. So I think what I'll do now is I'll come over here and fill in this tree. And I think on that one, I'm just going to go direct with this burnt umber. No uh, mixing uh, of lighter colors with it. Just straight burnt umber. I'm going to come over here and uh, there we go to my tree. There's also going to be a uh, greenery on here. Just so perfection is not required. Then again, I think that uh, I came to the realization a long time ago, there's no real perfection. Just let it be. Here are my other branches here. I'm not getting a smooth stroke. I did not have enough uh, water on my brush. So I was not getting the uh, smooth texture that I wanted. Uh, I see I've missed a spot with the gray on the mountain right here. Do you see the blue? So I'm going to have to fill that in too. It's like I just didn't even see it. more water. More burnt umber. There we go. Now we're getting... I say we as though there is someone else here with me. The little mouse in my pocket, I suppose. Okay. There we go. The other thing about watercolors, too, is the amount of water. You're really just pushing the bead of water around uh, to form lines and streaks for dimension. Uh, so the viscosity of it really depends on you. You know, because it, acrylics, too, you add water, too, so... 
in the watercolors, you're just really pushing that uh, extra bead of water around, directing the flow. So if you want your painting more watery, then you can add more uh, water. I think I just tend to uh, like it a little bit thicker. All right. So there's my tree. I still have that spot that I need to fill in. So I'm going to go ahead and grab, rinse that out and grab a little bit of that gray, the Payne's gray. And fill that in. Oh, it's a little bit dark. That's all right. There's going to be tree uh, leaves, so you won't be able to see that anyway. Okay, so I've got that filled in. Boom, just like that. That gray is a little dark, but that's okay. It'll, again, that will have uh, branches on it. All right, let's see, where are we at? We've already been doing this for 45 minutes. That flew by quick. I've missed you guys. All right, so now what I'm going to go ahead and do is I think I'm gonna go ahead and uh, let's add a little color. Let's do a little color. Let's have some fun. So uh, I'm gonna work on the flags and I noticed the color is red, white, yellow, blue, green. Uh, red, white, yellow, blue, green. So I'm gonna work to be close to that. Red, white, yellow, blue, green. Okay, so this one right here would be yellow. Okay, red, white, yellow, blue, green. Red, white, yellow. Yeah, actually talking to myself and counting those flags. So as you can see there, I've got two of them painted right there, okay? And so I'll move to the next one now, and we're gonna start yellow on this one now. Or actually, we'll do yellow down here on this piece, way down here. Okay, so red, white, yellow, blue, green, red, white, yellow. A little bit right there. Do the one closest to the top yellow now. You gotta count them. That's funny. Okay. And we've got one more. Okay. And if it's wrong, then it's my unique little flag. Okay, so I've got a couple more on there, as you could see, coming here on this other side. Going on down here to the bottom. Okay, so I've got my yellow ones done. So now I think I'll do uh, some green. A little bit of green. I've got this uh, beautiful, uh, vivid green. It's a little deep green, but I like it. So uh, what did I say? Red, white, yellow, blue, green. So it's uh, one after the yellow. Skip one. Oh, I think that one should have been blue. That's all right. A 
I like this vivid hue. It's a pretty, pretty green. It's almost like emerald. Not quite. Let's see those up there. And we'll come to this other side over here. Pretty good. All right. So there's my green flags. So it's been almost an hour now. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a break and either I'll come back later today or I will come back tomorrow. Uh, I really thought I'd get a lot more done than that in an hour's time. But anyway, thank you so much for joining me. Oh, it's Sky Singh. Thank you. Oh, Joanne, I see you. Ah, so wonderful. I've been waiting for somebody to chat with me, and I've been on here for an hour. But I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a break. I need to take a potty break. And so maybe I'll come back here around 2 o'clock and uh, finish this off. I think that sounds like a good idea. So I'll see you guys back here at 2 o'clock. Love and light from Christian Goddess Gallery. Bye-bye.